Hey artists, today we are talking about glaze and the rules that we're going to follow to have a successful glazing time in the art room. Start by looking at your clay project. So each grade makes a different clay project and I also change them up year to year. So it might vary from year to year. You might recognize these projects, you might not. I want to show you some that are unglazed to talk about where the glaze goes and where we don't want glaze. So any piece that's touching the desk surface, for example, this lily pad, this flat base is all touching the desk, so we don't want any glaze on the base. This owl you see is touching on this flat side. We don't want glaze here. And this 3D pot, um, this base circle, is touching the desk so we don't want any glaze there the reason is if glaze ends up on the base of your project and it goes in the kiln it will get stuck to the kiln shelf and the only way I can get it off is by breaking your project with a chisel to chisel it off the shelf so no glaze on the bottom is one of our glazing rules another glaze rule is you want three layers of each color when you're glazing um, and if I look at this fish, which is a second grade example, you can see that each glaze is nice and bright and vibrant. And besides this little spot here, you can't see the clay through the glaze. That's your goal. So that, that will get, um, three layers even of glaze. I see on this edge, I could have put another layer because I can see that white clay shining through. So three layers will give you a bright and vibrant color. If I look at this lily pad, I see I could have added more lime green glaze here because I see some of the clay showing through. This red looks great. It's nice and vibrant and shiny. And then if I look at this turtle, I notice that I can't see any clay spots. These brown bits are part of that glaze. And if I look on the bottom, I see it's all clean and it did not stick to the clay, sh the kiln shelf. All right, let's talk about color options. So we are very lucky. We live nearby a store called Minnesota Clay where we can buy these beautiful um, colored bright glazes. So we have all the colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, this sort of lime green. We have turquoise, dark blue, purple, we also have pink, which I don't have a tile for. Um, and then we have a black and a white. So those are our color options. And now let's talk about how we actually apply our glaze. All right, so when you're glazing your project, you're gonna have a paper plate. This is gonna help you carry your project from table to table. Each glaze color will be at a different color or a different color table so that we can spread out and there's not as much as much traffic. Uh, there will be three bl brushes at each color. Those brushes stay here. They stay at that color. That's so that turquoise glaze doesn't get in the lime green cup and ruin the entire cup of lime green. We want our brushes to stay at that color. You want three layers of each color. And it's important to note if you want to do any layers, for example, on this owl, I have a turquoise base with dark blue polka dots. You have to do three layers of this turquoise and then go over it with polka dots and do the polka dots three times. Um, same thing with the eyes. So you have to do three layers of this dark blue base and then come back over with the lime green and do three layers of that. So if you're doing layers or polka dots or stripes, anything like that, think about which layer is first and what comes next. Um, I'm going to start with this turquoise. When you dip your brush, you do not need to dip it in all the way. You don't want to waste a bunch of glaze on this brush that will just get dry and crispy. So I'm just dipping what I need. And I'm not scooping because I don't want it to drip on its way over to my clay project. That's also waste that will just end up all over the desk. Glaze is one of the more expensive um, supplies that we purchase in the art room. So we want to be extra mindful how much we are using on our project and how much is waste it. So I'm starting slowly. I'm adding uh, one layer of turquoise 
and you'll notice right away your glaze will start to dry and it'll look sort of like a light gray or a light white dusty color really quickly. That's normal and you want that. It's nothing wrong with the glaze. It's just a normal thing that occurs. So this is gonna dry really quickly. You can already see it right here. You do not need to wait for it to be fully dry before adding your second and third layer. So I can already dip my end in my brush, add my second layer. And then once I know I've covered the whole thing a second time, that same spot, I will go in with the third layer. Now I don't want it dripping off of my project. If it's dripping onto the base, there's a good chance it will drip onto the kiln shelf and get stuck. So you do not want it to be ooey gooey dripping all over. If you have tiny cracks like this right here, we want to actually get glaze into that tiny crack so that it doesn't show the, clays af the clay after firing. If I am done with this color, I'm going to clean off my brush so this extra does not get wasted. That's very important. I want you to actually clean it off on the edge of the cup by petting the kitty. And then after it's clean, you set it on the plate, not before when it's all full of globs. Now, if you want to do any polka dots or something on top, again, you do not need to wait for the base to be dry. You can right away add those polka dots. And just like with our base color, you do have to do the polka dots a couple times or they will just sort of blend in and disappear to that turquoise. All right, let's talk about what you do when you're done glazing. Now that we're done glazing, it's time to make sure that we didn't get any glaze on the bottom. Sometimes little brush marks get on the bottom or there was glaze on the plate and you set your project down. So we wanna make sure this is totally clean so that when I go to load the kiln, um, there is no chance of it getting stuck. So by the sink, there are gonna be buckets with a sponge inside. You're going to grab the sponge. Right now it's dripping water everywhere. So you want to first squeeze out the sponge as hard as you can. You don't want any water dripping because that will affect your clay project. So you're going to flip with one hand, even if your glaze is a little wet, just grab it carefully, use your sponge and do gentle circular motions on the back until there's no glaze left. Make sure you also get this edge that's also going to be touching the kiln shell. Once it's clean, the sponge goes back for another student. Your plate is gonna be stacked in a pile and your project will go on the kiln shelf waiting for the kiln.